Endocarditis refers to inflammation of the inner lining of the heart, known as endocardium. This inflammation is a consequence of two factors, which are the presence of organism in the bloodstream and the abnormal cardiac endothelium facilitating the adherence of the microorganisms and their growth. The risk factors for this colonization of the inner lining of the heart, endocarditis, is underlying structure of valve defects such as right heart defect, congenital heart diseases, prosthetic valves, intravenous drug use, and bacteria that is due to poor dental hygiene, dental treatment, heart surgery, IV cannula, especially the central lines, and soft tissue infections. This endocarditis can be classified into two, that is the acute endocarditis and subacute. In acute endocarditis, it is a vaporite illness which rapidly damages the cardiac structures hematogeneously, seeding extra cardiac sites, and if untreated, it progresses to death within weeks. It is usually due to viral endogasms, which affects the normal valves such as Staphylococcus aureus and Streptococcus. The second classification is subacute endocarditis and this follows an indolent cause which causes structural cardiac damage only slowly if at all. It rarely causes metastatic infections and gradually progressive and less complicated by major embolic event and ruptured mycotic aneurysm. It is usually caused by organisms of low virulence and commonly affected valves that have already been damaged. The pathophysiology of this endocarditis involves the formation of the thrombi on the endocardium. Endothelial lining which has been damaged previously by infection and injury exposes the underlying collagen and the tissue factors. This causes the platelets and the fibrin to adhere to the injured site forming a tiny thrombosis. Then these therefore causes a non-bacterial thrombosis that's known as non-bacterial thrombotic endocarditis. Bacteremia delivers the organism to the valve surface and the bacteria then sticks to the already formed non-bacterial thrombic endocarditis causing vegetation and secreting adhesins. The adhesins therefore make the bacteria to stick together creating a biofilm along this bacteria. This biofilm occurs in areas of low blood pressure such as areas in low pressure arterial surface in aortic regurgitation and this eventually causes valvular leaflet infection. The clinical features of endocarditis include constitutional symptoms such as fever and chills which are the most common symptoms. Others include anorexia, weight loss, malaise, headache, myalgias, night sweats and shortness of breath. Petechia is a common feature, genuine lesions which are non-tender macula on the palms and soles, ocular nodes which refers to tender subcutaneous nodules found on the distal parts of the digit, and rust spots or retinal hemorrhages, splint hemorrhages, which are the dark linear lesions in the nail beds, heart murmurs and gallop rhythm are present. Vasculitis, symptoms may be due to primary cardiac effects or secondary embolic phenomena, and dyspnea, calf, chest pain are the most complaints of intravenous drug uses of the predominance of tricuspid valve endocarditis. There will be mild to moderate pallor in these patients, and distended neck veins, rails or cardiac arrhythmias with pulse irregularity, pericardial up, finger clubbing, vascular phenomena such as conjunctival hemorrhage, and tender splenomegaly. Neurologic disease due to embolic stroke with focal neurologic deficits such as paralysis, hemiparesis, and aphasia may be common. Stiff neck and delirium, and signs of systemic septic emboli due to left heart disease, which is most commonly associated with mitral valve vegetations. The investigations and diagnosis done in patients with endocarditis include a full blood count, which will give anemia or chronic illness in subacute endocarditis, and leukocytosis observed in acute endocarditis. If you conduct erythrocyte sedimentation rate would be elevated and the C-reactive protein, urea, electrolytes and creatinine levels, urinalysis for evaluation of protein urea and microscopic hematuria, blood cultures, rheumatoid factors also known as subacute endocarditis. 
In your imaging studies, you conduct echocardiography, and this test is particularly indicated with calcium negative cases such as fungal endocarditis. Chest radiography will show congestive cardiac failure by cardiomegaly and pulmonary edema. CT scanning is helpful localizing abscesses and electrocardiography. The diagnosis of infective endocarditis can be done by using the Duke's criteria, and this involves a blood culture which is positive, a major criteria, typical organisms from two cultures, persistent positive blood cultures are taken more than 12 hours apart, and three or more positive cultures taken over one hour. Then there is endocardial involvement in major criteria which is by positive echocardiographic findings of vegetation, new valvular regurgitation. And in minor criteria, we have predisposing valvular cardiac abnormality, intravenous drug misuse, pyrexia of more than 30 degrees Celsius, embolic phenomenon, vasculitic phenomenon, and blood culture suggestive of organic grown but not achieving major criteria. Suggestive echocardiography is also under minor criteria. For you to diagnose, definitive endocarditis is diagnosed by two major or one major and three minor or five minor features. And in possible endocarditis, we have one major feature and one minor or three minor features. The treatment for endocarditis involves long-term empirical therapy in intravenous antibiotics. For intravenous drug users who are most affected by staphylococcus aureus, you are means anti-staphylococcal penicillins such as nephilin and methicillin. For methicillin resistance streptococcus aureus, you give vancomycin plus dentamycin. And for mechanical valves most affected by streptococcus viridans, you give ceftriaxone and gentamicin. For fungal gansims, you like candida albicans, you use amphotericin B, but urgent surgical intervention may be required. And to prevent these endocarditis, you reduce the predisposing factors such as adequate treatment of upper respiratory tract infection, drug abuse prevention, aseptic technique in intravenous line insertion and therapeutic intravenous drug administration, early surgical correction for the congenital heart defects, and those with damaged valve should be given antibiotic prophylaxis before surgical manipulation of the dentals, gastrointestinal tract, and genital urinary system. The complications that may arise as endocarditis develops include myocardial infarction, pericarditis, cardiac arrhythmias, cardiac valvular insufficiency, congestive heart failure, aneurysm, aortic root or myocardial diseases, arterial emboli and flux mycotic aneurysm, arthritis, myositis, and glomerulonephritis, also acute renal failure, stroke syndromes, and mesentery or splenic abscesses or infarcts. Thank you and don't forget to subscribe to our channel.